Okay, stay right down here in the front. Marilyn from USA Today again. Greg, um, you came in a big name, drawing a lot of attention, but uh, <coughs> guys like Ron Lewis had said that, that you and the other freshmen were very respectful of the veterans. Can you talk about what you've learned as far as leadership, emotional stuff from Ron Lewis? Uh, Ron's been here before, so uh, this was my first go around in college, and so I just come in with my eyes open and a lot to learn, and I listen because those guys have been through it before, and they have a lot to teach me. So you just want to come in and be real respectful and know that you have a lot to learn and to improve on. Okay, over here on the right-hand side front. Yeah, if I could, a question for two guys, both on injuries. Um, Ivan, what was your thought when you um, came, went down on your leg? First of all, did it was it because Greg fell over the top of you? or And also, after that, Greg, uh, just a question on your chin. Uh, I understand you had three stitches. What, what you thought might be wrong when you hit the floor? I was uh, trying to take a charge, and, uh, and Greg was trying to block a shot. And I guess I was uh, behind him, and I tripped him up, and he's laying on my knee. But uh, and my knee's fine right now, and, uh, and I'm just, just ready to play tomorrow. My chin's fine. I got three stitches. That's it. <laughs> Another one down here on the front. Uh, Thad, I was just curious if... Is Coach Trussell still texting you, and has he said anything about what a wild ride you're on, kind of like what they were on? Yeah, he's, uh, you know, he, he, I get my, I don't know if that guy sleeps because he sends texts like at 3 o'clock in the morning. But, uh, uh, you know, he's been great and, and uh, always offering up, uh, you know, words of, of encouragement. And, and you know, it, it says a lot about him. It's all focused on team and, and, and playing hard and, and, you know, Trying to, to finish a mission, and, and um, you know it's it's always good to to get those and read and ponder and and uh, you know take it and and let the guys know you know kind of what he said and and, and he spoke to us. Uh, he came in and one day unannounced and, and spoke to the team. I don't know where we were going. I think to Lexington, and uh, as always, he he does a great job for us. Okay, right down here on the left hand side. Stephen Hawkins with the AP. Greg. After the way the Xavier game ended for you, you had mentioned earlier this week how determined you were to kind of come out and do better. So how frustrating was it for you to get into foul trouble? And do you think maybe you were almost too determined to, to make up for how the Xavier game ended? Um, no, I just think I got in foul trouble in the first half. And, I mean, I think I did a pretty decent job in the second half. It was a lot more about effort, not about me scoring or anything. It was just me out there running the floor hard and picking and creating things for my teammates. So... I mean, it was just the effort that I feel I, I had a pretty decent game yesterday because uh, we need to play hard in the second half, and I think I, I stepped up and did that also. Okay, over here on the right. Right down here on the front again. Bob Baptist, Columbus Dispatch. Jamar, I don't want you to feel left out. Um, could you just talk a little bit about it? Lighty has spent the better part of the season trying to get a shot to fall for him. Uh, could you just talk about what you thought when um, first he had the three-point play at the end of the half, and then he made the three down the stretch when you guys were making your run? Um, what did you think when those, after seeing a lot of his shots go in and out all season, what did you think when they a couple finally went in? Uh, you know, that play at the end of the first half, you know, I think that, that gave us a little momentum going into halftime. When we came out the second half, you know, we kept thriving on that. And then, you know, the big shot he hit in the second half, the... You know, it was, it was a huge three that tied the game back up for us. And, you know, he played really great last night. Okay, over here against the wall. Um, for any of you guys, uh, Matt McCoy, WTVN Radio. For any of you guys, players, um, just your impressions in the crash course you're getting on Memphis uh, from what you've seen, just your impressions of the team and uh, the challenge you face tomorrow. Uh, they're an uh, up-and-down team, tempo. Uh, they like to drive the ball, pass and kick. They play together a lot. Um, um, they're a young basketball team, but they're poised. Um, and they're big man, offensive rebound a lot. So we have to keep them off the glass. 
Okay, down here on the front, right. <clears throat> Sean Bennett, Chronicle Telegram. Uh, this question is for that and anybody else who wants to comment, but I know you probably weren't rooting for anybody in the first uh, game, but now that Memphis has won, are you kind of happy that you won't have to deal with that uh, Texas crowd and it's going to be a little bit more even for your game tomorrow? Yeah. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't get out to see, uh, but the coaches that were here scouting said it was uh, predominantly Texas A&M, as, as it should be. Um, but yeah, I think that'll even the, the playing field a little bit more uh, in that situation. And, you know, and the funny thing, you, you think about it, uh, for Texas A&M, I mean, they did have to play Louisville uh, 70 miles from, from home as well. So, uh, but I, I do think that'll be uh, hopefully a little bit of an uh, advantage for both us and Memphis. Okay, over here in the left-hand corner. Doug Lamarie's Cleveland Plain Dealer. Greg, can you just talk about the block at the end, what you were thinking as Tennessee's bringing the ball down the court, if you knew you were going to block that shot or what it felt like after you, you did block it at the end? Um, it felt like we won. <laughs> and uh, it was just a thing. I didn't want my man to score. And uh, I saw that uh, Ramar Smith was had his head down and he wasn't going to be able to pass it to my man. So I just went over to help. And I mean, I happened to get the block, but uh, I think time expired before I got the block also, so. Anyone else? Okay, how about right over here in the front? Just for the record, Thad or Greg, was that officially a block or did time expire? I don't know. Uh, Bill Rafferty told me after the game he didn't think it would have counted. One second, was it? Yeah. I, I didn't. I haven't seen it close. I didn't rewind it. Um, sorry. Okay, back here in the front. Kind of along those lines, Mike. When you're at the free throw line with 6.5, I mean, can you describe what was going through your head or anything going through your head? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I was trying to keep a lot out of my head that time. You know, just concentrating on the free throws and. Uh, I wanted to make both of them, but uh, you know I knew I was going to make at least one. And after I made that one, uh, unfortunately I missed the second one. And at that point, it was uh, you know trying to get back and getting a defensive stance and not let them get an easy shot up. Okay, over here in the second row, John Whistler, uh, San Antonio Express News. This question is for Jamar and Ivan. Um, is this the the, the best? basketball you've seen out of Ron so far and, uh, and are you got you've played with him now for a while and are you guys looking for him now that he's so hot uh, yeah I think so uh, you know uh, Ron Lou is an excellent player you know uh, when he got to uh, Ohio State you know I always knew he had it in him so uh, I mean Ron this time this tournament time we needed him and uh, he's stepping up his game and uh, you know we're gonna give him the ball if he's open and let him go to work uh, yeah, I have to say, you know, Ron's playing really great right now. Uh, you know, he's stepping up. He's making big shots toward the end of games. And, you know, he's been that, that senior leader that uh, we knew that, that, that he had in him. And, uh, as long as he keeps playing like that, yeah, I think we'll keep going to him. Okay, right here in the center. Brian, Brian Landman, St. Petersburg Times. Ron, since Coach said he really is embarrassed and didn't know about you before you, you transferred in, other than – he just leading his team to the Elite Eight. What did you know about Coach Mata when you made the decision to transfer to Ohio State? Uh, I know he's been uh, winning uh, since he became a coach. Um, and I also knew that he played the style of basketball that I would like to play. So um, those two go hand in hand with each other. And I made my decision off of that. Okay, we have a couple more minutes with the student-athletes right here in the middle. Justin Daff, 